These are the faces of students who were forced to attend a Manitoba residential school over a hundred years ago. Somewhere among them is a boy whose name sparked many questions. Dummy bad boy. He's one of thousands of students named on this scroll unveiled by the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation, documenting children who died at residential schools. The death of dummy bad boy. Including his name was a tough decision for the center. Keeping that information back would do more harm than making it available and potentially finding the true identity of the children. How did he get that name? Where was he from? When did he die? How did he die? And who was he? A two-month journey digging through the archives helps us answer some of these questions. The search begins with a single document, a death record with two clues. It gives a time frame for when he was forced to attend the Anglican-run Washakata Indian home in Elkhorn, Manitoba, and that his home and family were over 900 kilometers away. Oftentimes, a death of a child at school will just be mentioned in passing or might be jotted down in the margins of a record. After scouring the center's archives for clues, attention turns to Canada's National Library. Annual reports from the 1890s are online. There's a class photo of his last year at Elkhorn. And we find out he was taken to the school in 1891 at the age of 13. At that time, residential schools were known as industrial schools, and this teenager worked the printing press to help print the town's paper, the Elkhorn Advocate. The 1895 report describes him as being a fine, strong, intelligent lad of fine physique and is unusually careful of his personal appearance. It also provides a clue on how he may have gotten his nickname. This boy is a marvel being a deaf mute. At that time, the word used to describe those who were deaf and could not speak was dummy. I can't imagine living with a name like that. Herman Yellow Old Woman is a member of the Siksika Nation in southern Alberta, the same community that we trace the bad boy family name back to. A fluent speaker, he tried to translate what is believed to be the boy's Blackfoot name, found in several records. There's several ways that you can interpret that uh, beginning, but it's the ending that was, that was probably spelt wrong. Um, so we can make a guess, we can see that it, it's dealing with a male uh, horse. But he will keep his nickname and take it to the grave in 1896. Unusual for the time, the death notice honors him as a general favorite for all who knew him. The funeral is held in Elkhorn, but the article gives no indication where he died or if he is among these unmarked graves. It's going to take years and years and a lot of engagement with um, survivors, their families, their communities as well. The National Centre for Truth and Reconciliation says it's going to be updating its register to reflect the new information uncovered, marking the first time a name has completely changed on the public memorial. Gonna see you, dear. CBC News, Gahnawage.